Hey, hey, just when you thought you couldn't have more fun with static electricity, there's more additional higher level static electricity stuff. If you look at what's going on, we're going to define electric potential and electric potential energy. We are going to apply the oppression, expression for electric potential from a point charge, and then we're going to state and apply the formula relating this electric field strength to an electric potential gradient. Buckle up. Let's get down to definition for electrical potential energy. Take a minute and write this down. Now to help you understand this definition, we've got this little particle. Uh, let's make this our point charge. Uh, or it's a negative charge just sitting there. Let's say we're going to take a little positive test charge or point charge and we're going to move it from infi infinitely far away which is very far, and we're going to move it in closer. That's going to, a certain amount of work will be done on it by the electric field as it comes in. So to calculate that, there's an integral for work, which we're going to ignore. But from that integral, what it comes down to is force times our final minus our initial, with our final being where it ends up at, and our initial is infinitely far away. So if we distribute that, what it becomes is k q1 q2 over r sub f squared minus k one q2 over r initial squared. Oh yeah, let me remember the distribution part. There's r sub f again, and there's r initial. All I did was fill in the equation you already know for the force of two static charges. And then what happens is we have some cancellation stuff happening here. One of those goes away and one of those goes away. Except it turns out that this whole thing goes away. And that's because r sub 1 was infinite, infinitely far away. And if you divide by infinity, you get zero. So our final equation here is just work is equal to k q1 q2 over r. Now, that leads us to another definition that you will be somewhat familiar with. That is, electric potential uh, is the work done per unit charge to move that guy from infinitely far away to in there. So, with that, is going to look like is that if voltage is work per unit charge, then we take this business, which we know to be work, plug it in, and let's say our unit charge is this guy, Q2. It goes away, and then we end up with KQ over R equals voltage. And this is the voltage of due to a static charge if you're near it. And we're going to draw some graphs with electric potential and electric field strength. And they may look confusing, but they're actually pretty easy if you think of them. So let's say we've got a set of capacitor plates. Maybe this is 100 volts and maybe this is 0 volts, for example. As you move across a capacitor plate at a distance r, the voltage is going to go down linearly as you go from 100 down to 0. The electric field strength, now this shows constant field strength, so it's a flat line. If we have a situation of a point charge and your distance r can vary as a radius of how close you are to it, if you are super close to it on the plus r side, you're going to have an almost infinite voltage. And that will decrease as you go away. If you go in the negative direction, that also decreases and approaches 0. Here, v is proportional to 1 over r. For your electrical field strength, that also has the same shape. It gets much smaller as you get away. The only difference is 
is that this is proportional to 1 over r squared. Now if you have a negative particle, that's easy. It's the exact same thing, except things tend to go super negative. And electrical field strength, exact same thing. Now, as we look at the potential between two dipoles, a positive and a negative, let's see what we're going to end up with. If you're at where r is 0, right next to this positive guy, your voltage is very high. As you are at the end of r, right next to the negative charge, your voltage is very low. And when you're in the middle, your voltage will be nothing. And that will have this shape. Now if you're looking at the electric field strength, the electric field, where you have lots of concentrated lines, is super high over near the positive. It's the same direction and still super high over at the negative. Now as you get in the middle, it's a little bit weaker and it kind of flatlines. So the situation that you get is something like that. It never goes to zero because you always have some electric field strength. As you are dealing with voltage of, let's say, two positive point charges, uh, when you're over at the beginning of R, super high voltage. When you are at the other positive R, super high voltage. And when you're in this middle spot, you have zero voltage. Because they, uh... oh, sorry, no, you don't have zero. You still have some. It doesn't cancel out completely because it's a scalar. And so you'll end up with something like that. And if you look at electric field strength, over here near the positive, where R is zero, you have super high field strength in one direction. When you're over here, the field strength is the other direction. And right in the middle, as you probably know, there's zero electric field. So you end up with a shape like this. And now if you are dealing with a hollow sphere, conducting sphere, which may seem like a strange situation to find yourself in, but if you are, and you're concerned about the voltage, uh, you should know that since it's a scalar, there is voltage or potential within it, but it's constant. And so you have a flat line until you get to a spot where you're at the edge of the sphere right here. And then it starts to drop down just like this. And if you are looking at the electric field strength, you might remember, like a Faraday cage, there is zero electric field strength within until you get to a point just outside the sphere and then it skyrockets. And then it tapers down like that. Whoa, I'm upside down. Let's take a closer look at the voltage and electrical field strength graph for that conducting sphere um, that we finished up with. Uh, remember the voltage is constant throughout and then as soon as you get outside that conducting sphere, uh, you are going to have a big negative slope. And then as you get farther away, you will have a smaller negative slope. Now it turns out that corresponds exactly to the actual value, although opposite in sign. If you have a big negative slope here, you have a big positive value of your electrical field strength. And where you have a small negative slope for voltage, you have a small positive value here. And the way that looks in equation form is that um, electrical field strength is equal to the opposite sign of the gradient or the change in potential over the change in distance. If you want to deal, if you like dealing with x's, electrical field strength is equal to change in voltage based on distance. That is it.